Imagine a hurricane has ripped through your town, homes destroyed, trees upended, live power lines dangling, debris all around. You need to get to shelter, but you don't know where you'll find help. You begin to pick your way carefully through this dangerous and unstable landscape. Now imagine doing that blind. When Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico, Dr. Jose, a blind professor, got lost. Fortunately, he was able to use his phone in a new, unexpected way. It became his trusted guide. Processing. A rocky island in the middle of a dirt field. Dirt field. The last time he used the app at this location, it said a bridge over a river. The bridge had flown away in the hurricane. Thank goodness he didn't try to cross that. With the phone in one hand and cane in another, Dr. Jose avoided other hazards like fallen trees and, yes, fallen power lines. Eventually, he got to safety. And this little app on his phone became his new best friend. You see, the world is full of gaps, gaps between what we want to do and what we can do. Some gaps are small and temporary, others lasting and profound, but we all experience them. For the blind, the gaps are never ending. How do you find the entrance to a building? How do you trust the money that the cashier gave you? Or how do you check your daughter's homework? We call people with profound gaps disabled, and I believe that's wrong. Disability is merely the mismatch between a person and the environment they are in. Armed with the right tools, people are limitless. And the challenge here is coming up with the tools that can fill those gaps. Believe it or not, you and I suffer from gaps from time to time. Say you are holding a baby while trying to heat milk. That's an example of a situational disability. You have just one arm, and that's a brief experience you get. Getting harder, you can always keep the baby down. Bye-bye. <laughs> now, say, now say you want to, you're driving on the highway 70 miles an hour, and you get a text from your boss that you need to reply. That's another situational disability. Sure, you can wait for the exit and get out, or with the magic of voice assistant, dictate your reply right then and there. Or how about you need to get to Florida? It's your ability to march all the way there, penguin style. Or with the magic of Wright Brothers, you can get there in five hours instead of marching five months. And that's the point. Technology is here to fill the gaps between our ability and our task, to make us more efficient, to open doors to new opportunities, to give us superpowers. For the blind, technology is not a convenience. It is a necessity. 294 million people around the world are blind or low vision. That's almost the population of the United States. In this community, 60% of students entering college won't graduate. 70% of working age adults remain unemployed. Let that sink in for a minute. This is an unacceptable reality. It's not the failing of ability, no. It's a failing of technology. And I witnessed a failing in my own personal life. When I immigrated to North America in 2005, Skype video calls would keep me and my family connected internationally, especially with my grandfather. Happy, smiling faces appearing weekly on a video call. But as he started to age, it became apparent. He was losing his sense of hearing, and vision. Simple conversations became tiring as each sentence had to be repeated louder. My grandfather, a lifelong educator, a professor, an author, and an avid reader, was having a hard time reading books. And finally, one day, on a video call, he didn't recognize my face anymore. That was heartbreaking. I started looking out for solutions that could help him and was shocked to see the state of technology. I mean, we live in a day and age of self-driving cars, and at the same time, these tools felt decades old. Well, when you can't find a solution, 
you do the next best thing. You go build it. So I got started, met this group of like-minded folks, and we set out to explore the area of artificial intelligence for the blind community. Our first prototype, built at a programming hackathon in Microsoft, was this talking cell phone duct taped to the head, MacGyver styled. <laughs> hey, no one, ever, no one ever accuses geeks of being fashion forward. <laughs> you could talk to it, ask questions, and it will give you the answers based on your visual surroundings. We were happy. So after the hackathon, we went garage style. We worked evenings and weekends to see how far can we push it. And this evolved into a smart glass prototype. You press a button, it takes a photograph, and a few seconds later, you hear a description. We are happy even more. And this time, we got more attention. So we started asking, how do we get it in the hands of as many people as possible? And the answer was simple, a free smartphone app. So we got official blessings, cranked it to an 11, and a year later released Seeing AI, the talking camera app for the blind community. Talking camera. It speaks what it sees. As the name basically gives it away, it's speaking based on computer vision and artificial intelligence to describe and narrate the world in front of you. It's like a Swiss Army knife. You know, it's small, it's portable, and helps you with dozens of tasks. Hey, you can see how just excited I am talking about it. But if you couldn't see, this app could help. One face near center five feet away. Eugene near center five feet away. Process, 37-year-old male with a mustache wearing glasses looking happy. After using this, who doesn't want to smile, right? <laughs> so it describes the people in front of you. Are they to the left or to the right? To the front, one feet or 10 feet? And when you take the photograph, it predicts their age, their gender, and even the emotion on their face. And people find creative uses of it. One blind salesman uses this to change his sales pitch based on the customer's changing physical response. Handy for business. I realized. When my wife gets angry, I used to take a quick snap of her to show what the app thinks of her. <laughs> I learned never to do that again. <laughs> so the app can do more stuff, like real-time face recognition. You teach it a face by showing three faces of a person, it will remember it, and next time, blurt it out. A professor photographed her entire classroom put the phone on her desk, pointed towards the door, and now students cannot sneak in late to the class anymore. <laughs> it announces their name, busted. <laughs> now, our creative users, as the name said, are creative. They figure out new uses of face recognition. There's a guy named Mr. Lincoln who appears in the center of a $5 bill. And if you teach his face, you can basically recognize currency notes. So we got the hint, and we built the real thing. Five US dollars. 10 US dollars. This was pretty fast. <laughs> you remember the famous blind jazz musician, Ray Charles? He always insisted on being paid in single dollar bills. So he was sure that nobody is cheating him. For the sighted, exchanging money is exchanging numbers. But for the blind, it's exchanging trust. But with this app, Ray Charles would not have to worry no more. <laughs> so it can understand faces. Could we maybe teach it more about the human body, the objects around it, and maybe how they are interacting, like in this photo? So we got that done. Processing. A man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. It describes complex scenes in a rich way. You know, it's pretty great, but it does make mistakes. It's like a three-year-old. It's young, it's learning, and the more of the world it sees, the better it gets. And hopefully someday, it might have grown up enough to narrate movies in real time. Now, the day we released the app, we noticed something interesting. 
blind users started posting photographs on Facebook <laughs> that they took themselves. Yeah, hashtag blind photography just got real, son. I think it's, I guess it's pretty obvious, you know, with the live app's live guidance, when you meet a friend at a social occasion, you put them in the center, you know they are not too far away, and you take the photograph and realize they are not smiling. So you scold them, slap them, and then retake the photograph. <laughs> After all, who doesn't want smiling photos, right? Now, taking a photograph, posting it on Facebook, these are acts that we take for granted. They connect us and convey our emotion to the world. And now, the blind community can connect, just like anyone, with a smile. Now, what else can the app do? It can read text in real time. 130. And real time is beautiful, because if you don't know where the text is to begin with, you can scan, say, a hotel, and realize the hotel room number, the exit sign, or the temperature on the thermometer. People were shocked. They never knew how much takes around them. And having access to it gave them a sense of freedom. Many users started to sit in the back of cabs, pointing the phone outside to discover new stores that have opened in their neighborhood. Chipotle Mexican Grill. Office, FedEx office. One American blind user put the phone on a tripod, pointed it towards his television, and started watching Korean movies. <laughs> Someone's coming. I'll look into it and text you, baby. <laughs> now, not every information is printed. Some of it is handwritten. So we got that solved. We launched this in December. December means Christmas. Christmas means greeting cards. And suddenly, Twitter went ablaze with people saying, for the first time in life, they read a greeting card. Someone read a love letter that they had received before they went blind. Someone read their kids' homework for the first time. And for the first time, scolded them because they realized the homework isn't done. <laughs> tears of joy became tears of pain. Now, another fascinating use is recognizing products. Imagine holding a can of Coke and a can of Pepsi in your hands, trying to distinguish them while being blindfolded. It's hard, right? Sure, you can use a barcode reader to help you, but there's a tiny problem. If you can't see, how do you know the, where the barcode is to begin with? And then you have to line it up correctly. Any of you who has gone to the self-checkout counter at your grocery store knows what I'm talking about. It's frustrating. So we taught the app what a barcode means, attached a beeping sound to it, and then the closer you get, the more it beeps. Process Coca-Cola 6CT. Recognize without even looking. To do this before, you had to buy a bulky $1,200 laser barcode scanner. You know the kind you see in Target. And now with technology, you can solve that for free. How cool is that? <laughs> now, you might be wondering, hey, Anirudh, how is this AI trained? So let me give you a sneak peek behind the scenes. AI needs images, thousands and thousands of images, dirty images. All right, hold on to your imagination, not that kind of dirty. <laughs> I mean, bad angles, poor lighting, bizarre framing. We asked our volunteers for currency photographs, and that they kept giving us clear, crisp photos, you know, like the kind they were just printed from the US Mint. <laughs> so we took the worst photo every day and sent an email challenge to people, saying, can you do worse than this? <laughs> people said, we accept the challenge. And soon enough, 
the AI started to learn amazing patterns, like patterns like hundreds of 20 numerals written on a $20 currency note, which I never noticed myself. The AI soon became robust enough to be useful. Now, taking a selfie, recognizing a product, reading homework, you know, to someone experiencing these tiny acts for the first time in life, independently, they are magical, almost a life-changing moment. But what if we could do more than that? What if we could go beyond our wildest expectations? Jack Chen biked 3,000 miles at Race Across America, the world's toughest bike race. Eric Manser broke world records at Ironman Triathlon 140-mile event. And Eric Weinmayer climbed Mount Everest. You need more examples? Mark Riccobono drove a freaking car at the Daytona Speedway. <laughs> By the way, any of you planning here to grow old? I mean, we all expect it, but we often overlook the natural disabilities that come with age. Maybe it's hearing loss, maybe it's mobility issue. But we all will face gaps that will widen, just like with my grandfather. So won't it be great to have technologies to fill these gaps in your life? Maybe for your parents, for your grandparents, or how about you for your own future? Maybe it's time to get selfish. So encourage these innovations because you'll be helping yourself. You'll be helping us all. A week after releasing this app, my grandfather passed away. While he didn't get a chance to use the app himself, the work inspired by him is now empowering people around the world in finishing millions of caps, filling them up. And with each success, people generate enough confidence, going from, can I do this, to what else can I do? Technology is the great equalizer. It helps level the playing field for everyone, filling one gap at a time. Thank you.